Okay, let us run through one more idea involving the basicity of acids. Now, basicity of acids is how many protons that this guy can donate. Also, if I consider monoprotein or monobasic acids, I can only donate one H+. Plus. If it is diprotein or dibasic, I can donate two H+, pluses, and so on. Triprotein, I can donate three H+. Pluses. Then for bases, uh, the idea is the same. If I'm monobasic, I can accept one proton. If I'm dibasic, I can accept two protons. If I'm tri-basic, then I can accept three protons. That's the idea involving basicity. How many H pluses or how many protons to be transferred? And the basicity and the strength, actually, they are not that related to each other. You notice the examples that we have uh, for monoprotic acids. We have examples of strong acid, like HCl, HNO3. We also have examples of weak acid that are monoprotic, CH3, COOH. Similarly, for diprotic acids, we have examples for strong acid and weak acid. H2SO4 is counted as a strong acid. H2CO3 is counted as a weak acid. Carbonic acid, it is a weak acid. So the basicity, how many protons it can donate or how many protons it can accept, and strength, whether it is fully dissociated or partially dissociated, actually there are two different ideas. Huh? We don't try to lump them together. Now, you notice previously when we consider the dissociation of the strong acid, weak acid, strong base, weak base, we all use monoprotic acid base dissociation. We don't do diprotic species. We have to be very familiar with monoprotic acid base dissociation. Then subsequently, when we deal with diprotic species, you notice how we handle it is we treat it as in stages. So if I use H2CO3 as an example, it never dissociates two protons at once. It will dissociate one proton, lose one proton to give me HCO3 minus and H plus. Then this HCO3 minus uh, in the second stage, you dissociate to give me carbonate and another H plus. Now what we are doing is we are converting a diprotic acid to a series of two monoprotic acids. Make it into a series of two monoprotic acid because you notice uh, this ratio is one is to one is to one. The dissociation is one is to one is to one. So therefore this H2CO3 now becomes like a monoprotic acid. Then this HCO3 minus to your carbonate and uh, H plus, the more ratio again is one is to one is to one. Then again, this becomes a monoprotic acid. So this is the reason why we don't deal with formulas for diprotic species. We only deal with monoprotic species, strong acid, weak acid, strong base, weak base. Then later, when we are dealing with polyprotic species, that means diprotic, triprotic, we just extend whatever that we have learned for monoprotic species, we apply this to diprotic species. And we take this into stages, split this into a series or a sequence of monoprotic acid dissociation, and then we just apply each one of them accordingly. So you notice huh, we are able to do that. But we just keep this in mind. We need to run through more concepts first before we can come back and apply this to diprotic species. At least what we should be able to do at this stage is to understand that when we have a diprotic acid dissociation, we want to understand that the first acid is always stronger than the second acid. It will always be the case. The first acid is always stronger than the second acid. If it is triprotic, that means it can give me three H pluses. The first acid is always stronger than the second acid. Then the second acid is always stronger than the third acid. It's always the case. First guy is always stronger than the second one, stronger than the third one. Bases is also the same. Huh? If it is a base, first base will always be stronger than the second base. Second base will always be stronger than the third base. Always the case. Comparing the strength of your acids, we can compare this here. The first acid, it is a stronger acid. H2CO3, because it has two protons to donate. Huh? I have two protons, I donate this proton, or I donate the other proton, I'll still be acting as an acid. So therefore, it is easier for me to function as an acid. It is counted as a stronger acid than the other guy. Another way that we can see this is, if I consider the second acid, HCO3-, minus, because it is negatively charged. So therefore, when we are losing a proton, huh, this negative charge will try to attract the proton back. You notice when I'm losing H+, plus, progressively, the species becomes more and more negative, and it'll be harder and harder for it to lose the H+, plus because the negative species that will try to attract back the H+, plus makes it harder for the proton to be donated. So either way is fine. I can either explain why the first guy it is a stronger acid, 
or I can explain why the second guy it is a weaker acid. But this will always be true. Um, do keep this in mind. The first acid is always stronger than the second acid, which is in turn stronger than the third acid. Base is also the same. First base stronger than the second base, which is in turn stronger than the third base. All right. So this is the idea involving the basicity of acids. Apply in an exact same way to the basicity of bases. How many protons are involved? Uh, how many H plus donated or how many H plus accepted?